I was I've been in quarantine for too long. We'll just say that. <laughs> beautiful friends and fellow word lovers. Welcome back to Pocket of Poetry. My name is Olivia. Today I'm going to be taking a somewhat self-indulgent trip down the memory lane and I'm going to be reading some of my old poetry to you guys. Hopefully this is a fun video. I don't know. I just thought it would be kind of fun. I think, I don't know, I think going back and reading our old writings can sometimes bring wisdom and a perspective that we might otherwise have forgotten about or can remind us of how far we've come, how much we've learned in our lives. And I do like to incorporate writing um, into this channel and talk about kind of like my writing journey, my writing experiences and any advice I might have. Um, not that I'm an expert by any means, but I think the more we all talk about the things that we're trying to become better at and improve at, the more it, the more we can become better and the more we can kind of support each other in that process. So today's video is just going to be a couple of poems that I wrote. Um, a lot of them are going to be from a few years ago because around the age of like 17, 18, I wrote a lot of poetry and I actually have a Google Doc here that has a lot of my poetry in it. Um, I tried to create like my own anthology when I was like 18 um, and I made this whole Google Doc with all these different poems in it. Um, I also had a blog uh, that I used to post a lot of poetry on as well. Um, I still do have a blog which also has some poetry on it. So I'll be reading some like more recent poetry that I wrote like last year and more recently on my new blog. And then I'll also be reading some older poetry. So um, I don't know. I just there are certain poems that I've written that I kind of like have always wanted to share in like a video format. And so I figured why not? So I don't know if anybody cares. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm gonna start with this one poem called Girl on Fire. I wrote this poem in, I think, December of 2016. I was like 17 when I wrote this and um, it rhymes. And I just, I don't know, I have a very soft spot in my heart for this poem. Uh, it really inspires me still to this day, like just the the thought that and the intention behind it. Um, I kind of wrote it just about someone who has a really strong passion that's pushing them and helping them achieve their goals. and um, anyway, I'll just read it because what's the point of talking about it? I'm just gonna read it. She had a dream like a spark. It left on her heart a smoldering mark. She was full of a burning desire to be on fire. She started to work. She started to pray. She ran towards her dream every day. Each morning she woke toward the rising sun and started to run. Her speed grew greater, time blowing by. She wanted so badly to touch the sky. Her soul was aflame. She was numb to the pain. The heat kept her sane. The spark grew bigger, the smoke grew thicker. Her hair was a fire, the ends starting to flicker. The heat was rising as she rose to the sky and started to fly. That dream bore her onward, she was above the trees. The world grew smaller as buildings scraped her knees. When the people looked up, all they could see was a flaming scarlet cloud and she was free. So it's, I don't know, it's, I just like the imagery in it. I like how she starts out running and then like bursts into flame and I don't know. It's very dramatic obviously, but um, I thought it was fun. I like the imagery in there and it's one that's kind of inspired me throughout my life. Like every time I read it, I'm like, Ooh, like I got to chase my dreams. You know, I gotta, I gotta run. I gotta just like not look back, not give up. I have to stay dedicated. And I feel like that's kind of like a mindset that I've tried to keep with me throughout my life. So yeah, I'll also put all the poems down in the description below. So if you want to, you can read them too. Um, the next one that I'm going to read was also one that I wrote at around the age of 17. Um, I just wanted to share this one because it's super angsty and sometimes you just gotta share some angsty teenage poetry. I don't know. Um, there's this guy that I had a crush on that I worked with who, anyway, it was like a really weird crush that I had. I was like kind of obsessed with him, but I never really talked to him. So this is the poem that I wrote. It's called Never a Poem. I fell in love with you and I began making you into a poem. I built lines out of the way you walk like you're off to some grand destination and I crafted stanzas out of the shy smile you give me as you duck your head and turn away. I made you into a four page sonnet with language so beautiful and flowery it would have made even Shakespeare proud. To me you were a poem, a mystery with an unsolvable flavor, but you have never been a poem. 
You were just a boy, just flesh and bone, just thought and instinct, just hope and dream. Just a boy whose ideas and interests I'll never know about. Just a boy whose flesh and bone will never make contact with mine. Just a boy whose dreams are so empty of me. You have never been a poem simply because you were never mine to write. I just have to say, I feel like this this is one of those realizations that I feel like all adolescents at some point have to come to. At least, I don't know, all teenage girls who have a tendency to over-romanticize things the way that I did and do. Um, I just, yeah, I think at some point you have to learn, like, you tend to over-romanticize these boys or these girls, these people that you think are beautiful, and then you kind of have to come to the realization, like, they're just a human being, and that's, that's all they are, and, like, I don't know, like, yeah, they're, they're a person, and they have inherent worth and value, and they have things inside of them, but at the end of the day, they're just a person like anybody else, and I don't know, I just feel like it's one of those, one of those defining moments of youth is when you realize that about someone um i'm gonna i think i'm gonna read one more from this document i just have to find it this it was kind of hard to choose which one i wanted to pick to read next um this one i wrote my freshman year of college and i still distinctly remember how I felt when I wrote this and just like why I wrote it and just I don't know I still like it still makes me feel some type of way when I read this because I guess it was my first semester in college and I was I would just kind of wander around campus and I remember I always had a notebook with me and I would sit on like park benches and at bus stops and just random places and I would just write and write and write in my notebooks and I would write poetry and I would just write my thoughts and just like how I was feeling and I just always had these notebooks with me and I remember the feeling of just sitting there and writing and looking out at the world and watching all these people walking past me who all had kind of their own individual stories and lives going on that I didn't know about and I had this feeling of just being so alone and so isolated um but yet it was like this feeling of peace in a way of just like feeling I don't know how to explain it I just had like this this feeling of peace and this feeling of just desiring to be with myself and just existing in my own my own little universe I guess and um, so I wrote this poem of sorts it's called can't stop me I want to be so completely alone that I am like a star that has gone out no thoughts of instant connection or smartphones will people my brain no desire to be seen will write itself up my body like a tight dress I am alone. I breathe alone. I see other universes spiraling in or out of darkness as the case may be, and I am content to watch. My own galaxy is like ribbons through my fingertips. I am present in my own skin. I feel the breeze playing across it like a symphony, and the smells of the world are tentative guests in my nostrils. Words swirl in my mind. I want to cushion myself from disappointment, float above hurt feelings and sidelong glances, and words left unsaid. I am saying all of my words. My notebooks will remain a history of the weights I removed from my tongue. Maybe no one will ever read my poem, but they can't stop me from writing it. I don't know. Obviously, my writing wasn't that great. I was very um, over poetic, <laughs> but I feel like it's, I don't know, in a way, like, I guess it was this feeling of just like wanting to exist purely for the pleasure of existing and to create purely for the pleasure of creating and I didn't I was tired of trying to feel like I had to be seen in order to be valuable I think that's really really what it comes down to is like I was trying to come to an understanding of the fact that I was I, I had value and I had worth and my existence mattered even if I wasn't necessarily being seen or noticed by people um so yeah that was that was that so this next one that I'm going to share was actually written last year in 2020. I've actually almost exactly a year ago was when I wrote this. I posted this on my blog on April 26th of 2020. So like about a year ago. Um, I wanted to share this one because it genuinely describes like how I was feeling then so well. And just this feeling of loneliness that I had, this feeling of, I guess, purposelessness in my own existence. Um, sometimes I just wonder like how many people out there are feeling this way and I just wanted I wanted something to take care of I wanted something to depend on me I wanted 
I wanted to feel like I mattered. And so this was the poem that resulted from that feeling. It's called White Carnation, which I quite like the title as well. Like a white carnation I grow, blooming is a process of letting go, allowing what I learn to seep through my skin, not letting all the lies fester within. Keeping hope alive, wandering from day to day, finding the good in it all, keeping darkness at bay. Sometimes I wonder, perhaps I'd grow better if I had something to care for, another heart to unfetter. Like a single carnation I grow on my own, I guess I've always been used to feeling alone. But I've realized of lately, carnations aren't needed. They're simply there to look pretty, another spot to be weeded. I've always longed for importance, to be the savior, not the saved. All along, it's the feeling of significance I've craved. Perhaps there's another young blossom somewhere who needs my help, needs someone to care. My heart is a cavern. There's plenty of room to help another small flower to beautifully bloom. I don't know. That one just makes me emotional because I'm like, oh, it's just sad thinking about it. Um, but, you know, I think we all have that. Like, we all, we all want to help people. We all want purpose. And that's kind of just how I was feeling at that time. Okay, this one's called What a Beautiful Sadness. I wrote this in August of 2020. And um, this one's really dramatic, so just be ready. <laughs> she is flat and empty. An irritation pushes against her chest like the dull edge of a knife. At times like this, it settles on her. The weight of all the words she hasn't said, in places she hasn't been, in people she hasn't touched. Her whole life is before her, but it feels like a dead end. And it becomes too much to bear when all she can feel is the desperation of a quiet rage deep inside. A rage that has no place to exist except the narrow confines of an annoyingly fickle heart. Then she slides into the music, in injecting beats into her veins like a drug as power surges through her. Her brain becomes a mix of lyrics, fragments of music floating like butterfly nets. Catching her pain and sorrow, her boredom and her emptiness, and turning it all into a thing of beauty. Smoldering fuel for the ravenous fire of her art, a splash of psychedelic color across the empty canvas of her imagination. Um, yeah, that one's really over dramatic. So, yeah, but I don't know. I just wanted to share it because I was. I was. I had been in quarantine for too long. We'll just say that. <laughs> Last one I'm going to share, I'm going to try and find one that's kind of inspirational or just sort of calming. Um, I do have a couple that are like that, so let's see. This one called The Ocean. I wrote this one a, lo a long time ago. I was like 17. It was my first poetry marathon, which I did in 2016. So yeah, it would have been, I would have been 17 when I wrote this. Um, I've never lived near the ocean. I've only been to the beach and the ocean like a few times in my life when I've traveled. Um, but I've always lived like in the middle of the desert, so I don't have, um, a whole lot of experience with the ocean, but every time I have gone and been near, uh, the ocean, I've just felt so drawn to it. And so like the energy of it, it just fills me with this feeling that I have never gotten anywhere else. Um, and so I wrote a poem about it and I'll share that one. The ocean has a part of me, it's true, a piece of pure wild dancing gracelessly. Within my soul it comes and goes sometimes, and when it goes I know where it has gone, back to the sea, the place where it belongs. The ocean has a piece of me indeed, its gentle waves stir gentleness in me. It breathes contentment, calm and peace of mind, and tells me that my answers are inside. I look within, and then I sweetly know I found my missing piece beside the shore. The ocean is a trusted friend of mine, for though she may seem inconstant to some, the balance she strikes between calm and wild is a wonderful thing to emulate. I like the last part of that poem a lot. The balance she strikes between calm and wild is a wonderful thing to emulate. I just feel like the ocean is totally feminine energy in all of its glory. Like I just feel like a lot of us can learn how to harness our more of more of our wild emotional feminine side with our strong calm grounded feminine side and kind of like intertwining them in the best way so that was my my deep moment for the day but um anyways that is the last poem that i'm going to share thank you guys so much for watching um i feel like poetry i, I feel like my poetry definitely has a lot of room for improvement not only the old old ones but also the ones that i wrote like last year like they all have room for improvement. A lot of them are very messy and I've recently been doing a lot of videos on like poetic technique and kind of trying to 
refine my technique and make my poetry more consistent and that's something that I really want to work on with my writing is like making like the rhyme schemes and the rhythms a lot more consistent because a lot of the poems that I wrote here just aren't very consistent like rhythm wise um so that is something that I'm going to be working on in my poetry but anyways let me know down below if you liked any of these poems if you'd like to see another video like this um again I'll leave the poems down in the description below if you wanted to read them um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.